I'm Scott Gorilla. In the early 80s, I worked for Caterpillar Tractor Company, first as a final inspector for two years, progressing in research and development for another six in the instrument lab. I also worked out in the field. Years at the Proving Grounds involved the application of strain gauges to determine stress levels in aluminum and steel components. I also calibrated and installed transducers to measure pressures, linear and rotary speeds, temperatures, displacements, acceleration, and other variable phenomena for engineering research. By developing a unique technique, I was able to do strain gauge work faster and with better quality than anyone at the time. In Caterpillar's struggle for a government contract along with Martin Marietta on a prototype hard missile launcher, for example, I was chosen to do gauging for structural testing. Caterpillar also photographically documented my work for reference by the United States Air Force. Caterpillar also sent me to Phoenix, Arizona quite often to do work on many large prototype machines for them. In the late 80s, I was hired by WEEK-TV25 in East Peoria, Illinois as a broadcast engineer. I started as an audio engineer, progressed to operating three cameras for the morning newscasts. I operated master control, tape operations, and was a technical director of newscasts for over five years. In later years, WEK became centralized with WHOI Channel 19 as well as UPN 59. I helped implement the automation that was necessary at the time to achieve that. I also had written previously the standard protocol for master control operations. Summer break was coming between third and fourth year in high school and I asked my mom if she could pick up a book on college physics for me because physics was one of my favorite subjects as well as electronics and she came home with Schwamm's Outline series of college physics it was the 1970 edition I have kept it to this day in three months I went farther in this book in this subject on this topic than I ever did in college this made college a breeze totally easy to do back in the years that I worked at Caterpillar I taught music and I also composed and performed music Keyboard Magazine picked up on some of that after entering a contest, and so I put some of the music under here for you to listen to while looking at some of the other things I've done. This is a hovercraft that I designed and built in the form of a UFO with fiber optic displays. It was radio controlled and featured in the newspaper locally. This is a little windmill generator I made for fun out of a bicycle wheel. I decided to attempt to take aerial photographs from kites. Sky Doug featured in a magazine showing his kite here. I wanted one like it, so I designed my own, built it, flew just like his. One time a 62 pound kid hung from the kite line. It had tremendous lifting power. Here's a television transmitter, transmitted 3 watts on channel 13. Put that on a later version of my aerial camera system. This shows home build antennas and receiving equipment that worked very well. 
This is a UAV helicopter I bought from Dragonfly Innovations. They make various products for military and for fun. The three-tiered stabilization arm for the micro video camera was something that produced video that was better than had ever been seen from this vehicle before. So after posting those videos on the net, the owner of the company contacted me and offered all kinds of goodies and a whole complete brand new system. So I'd have two of them in trade for the design. During the early years of the TV station, in my spare time, I created a laser system. I bought a seven milliwatt polarized laser tube from Malay Grio and built it into a PVC pipe and a high voltage supply. Created some of my subjects like this alien with the blue eyes. They actually came out black in the final hologram because blue and red light makes black. I created this spatial filter. The objective there was to move a 25 micron pinhole relative to the focus light through a microscope objective and that would clarify the light so that it was smooth without any kind of interference patterns in the final product. They cost about $800 at the time. I built it with stuff just laying around other than the pinhole and the objective lens. And the final result, very, very sharp holograms. Years ago, I wanted a telescope that I could carry in my car, but I wanted a 10-inch reflector, so I had to design and build it myself. It worked perfectly. I even designed the spotting scope. When you look through the spotter, you see a red dot on your subject. When disassembled, this unit will fit in practically any car. Here you see three 4x8 hot air panels that were put into a big solar panel to heat this house. They didn't do it totally, but they sure supplemented the heat. It was actually controlled by a bimetal strip that I took out of an aquarium heater and connected to some relays, and that would turn on a squirrel cage fan to pull air through it. And this is an electric scooter I've been dealing with in recent years. I still haven't used it. It'll go about 40 miles an hour. It has about a 50 mile range. I can charge it with the sun, with the solar PV system that I also put together myself. I bought the components and designed it. These batteries, though, had we had a few failures here. I had a lot of trouble getting them out. It takes about three hours because they're wedged in there. You have to use crowbars and blocks. So I redesigned the way they fit into the unit. They can be swapped out in a matter of three minutes. And this bike is really fun. I bought a regular bicycle, put an engine kit on it, but all the brackets kept breaking, every single one of them repeatedly. So I started beefing them up and redesigning them. Now they don't break. Even the gas tank fractured. The engine just destroys them. So I created a shock mount. No more breakage. Well, I was at the TV station, and even to today, I shoot weddings. I've shot over 60 wedding videos. These are some of the DVD covers that I've created. I think they're some of the best I've seen. Maybe I'm a little biased. I also create some effects in the videos themselves that people really like. And I also shoot other things, special events, special occasions, whatever people want to pay for. And to make those videos extra special, I often had to make my own equipment, like brackets to hold things together, power supplies to be mobile with lots of power for extra hard drives, created these video lights at one time, created a stabilization system actually much more advanced than the one shown in this picture with uh, an external monitor. Uh, people often take pictures of my equipment and I do portraits like these. And location shots. And touch-up work for people that want it. I want those blemishes taken away. Also rebranded a movie. From a pile of photographs I created this poster and a festival of lights float. Using an old ignition coil, I created a circuit so I could charge this leaf with 30,000 volts of electricity in contact with film to create this what's called a Curlian image. I've also determined how to create lenticular three-dimensional images that are 3D to the eye without glasses. Here's what lenticular imaging is like. 
This is one of those floats that was under ice using a tracking system. I was able to create 18 images which are then interlaced together using special software and then a lens is applied to create a three-dimensional image. Now I can't show you 3D but you can see how the different perspectives work. For over a decade I've been licensed through the Institute of Technical Energy Medicine as a scientific investigator using a frequency counter we can measure ambient frequencies around the body generating colorful charts and a 12 page readout that reflects characteristics about the person's emotional constitution as well as physical. By myself I created the presentation video for the company that's on their website even to this day. Scott Gorilla has created RadiationAware.com to provide crucial information for Central Illinois residents who'd like to reduce their exposure to radiation. I'm Ron Ross and I'm with you all the way till 12 noon. Today we've got a special guest in the studio. His name is Scott Gorilla. He's owner of a business called Radiation Aware and he's our guest for... After learning about all the problems that people are having with their health, Due to exposure of radiation sources, I decided to start a business where I would check these exposures for people from radiation, for example, from a wire in the wall, or their cell phone, leaking microwave, their wireless devices in the house, whatever the case may be. Sometimes it's even military installations. I measure microwave frequencies and I also am able to detect milligauss levels, the low frequency radiation, and also ionizing radiation using a Geiger counter. You don't find many problems with that right now, but with Fukushima and problems worldwide, it, it may become more of a concern as time progresses. Years ago, I also participated in a fire walk. It was about 12 feet long, a cord of wood burned down. So a year and a half ago, I started working out. That's me a few months ago after mowing the lawn. I am certified through the National Exercise and Sports Trainers Association as a certified wellness coach. Kind of gives me some notoriety to help other people determine what their exposure is to things and what they can do to correct any physical challenges that they're up against. And I offer this to insurance companies that might want to hire me. I've also thought about implementing a program like this at wellness centers. Here's a device I built over 20 years ago to experiment with healing energies and consciousness. It actually floats on inner tubes so that the sound system that I incorporated into it will vibrate a person's body who lays on the table. And we've discovered that that opens up the meridian system there are many mathematical models for the hyperspatial aspect of our reality. This form, being the pentagonal dodecahedron, is in the same shape as our DNA. It's theorized that through intent and that hyperspatial aspect of mind-body interaction that we would have a true way to encode changes within the DNA structure through this form. I also am interested in foraging for food. I've been working on learning that over the last few years and acquiring many skills that would allow survival for people, even if our technology fails completely. I am very interested in wellness. I'm interested in imaging. I'm interested in engineering. I'm looking for steady employment at this time. I'm in a transitory phase. A change for something I've not done before would be fine as well. A few months ago, I tried out for a role as a doctor in the ABC miniseries Final Witness. Got it on the first try. Pretty neat. 